Hi there. Today, we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary TV miniseries, The Thorn Birds. I'm sure many of you hold fond memories of this classic show. The Thorn Birds is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the series with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in the year 2023. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of The Thorn Birds together. Richard Chamberlain as Ralph de Bricassart. George Richard Chamberlain had already made a name for himself well before his role in The Thorn Birds. Back in the swinging 60s, he was hailed as a teen heartthrob for his portrayal of Dr. Kildare. However, it was in the 1980s that he truly solidified his status as a renowned actor with memorable performances in The Thorn Birds and Shogun. In 1988, Chamberlain made cinematic history as the first actor to take on the role of Jason Bourne in the film adaptation of The Bourne Identity. His talent wasn't confined to the screen. He also graced the classical stage and showcased his versatility in musical theater productions. Following his stint in The Thorn Birds, Chamberlain primarily ventured into television movies and on-stage performances, often making guest appearances on popular shows like the Drew Carey Show, and Will and & Grace. In 1993, he headlined the Broadway revival of My Fair Lady, demonstrating his enduring stage presence. Then, in 2005, he took on the lead role in the Broadway national tour of Scrooge the Musical. Chamberlain's commitment to the stage continued in 2008 and 2009 when he assumed the iconic role of King Arthur in the national tour of Monty Python's Spamalot proving that his passion for acting knew no bounds. Rachel Ward as Meggie Cleary Rachel Ward's early years might not be widely remembered, but they were marked by her remarkable career as a model. She graced the covers of prestigious magazines like Vogue, Cosmopolitan, and Harper's and Queen. In 1977, she made a significant move to the United States, where she ventured into the world of television commercials. Among her early achievements were notable appearances in advertisements like Revlon's Scoundrel Girl and Lincoln Mercury's Cougar Girl. Her talent and beauty were recognized in 1981 when she received a Golden Globe nomination for New Star of the Year, all before her iconic role in The Thorn Birds. It was The Thorn Birds that truly catapulted Rachel Ward to stardom earning her a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress. She credited her success in acting to the guidance of her coach, Sandra Seacat. Her performance in The Thorn Birds left an indelible mark, and in 1983, the U.S. audience voted her as one of the world's ten most beautiful women. Following the conclusion of The Thorn Birds, she ventured into the world of film, starring alongside Jeff Bridges in the film Noir Remake Against All Odds. Her acting prowess continued to shine, leading to another Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress in a miniseries in 2001, this time for her role in On the Beach. In 2006, she graced the small screen once more, appearing in the miniseries Blackbeard. Rachel Ward's talent extended beyond acting, in 2009, she took a step behind the camera, making her directorial debut with the feature-length film Beautiful Kate, adapted from the 1982 Newton Thornburg novel, showcasing her versatility and passion for the art of storytelling. Sidney Penny as Young Meggie Cleary. Sidney took on the role of Young Meggie in The Thorn Birds, which marked her early foray into acting. She also made significant appearances in the soap opera All My Children and portrayed Samantha in the CBS soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful. In 1988, she ventured into the television drama realm with her role in Hyperion Bay. Following her memorable stint in The Thorn Birds, Sidney made a notable move to the big screen, appearing alongside Clint Eastwood in the 1985 film Pale Rider. While her portrayal in The Thorn Birds was remarkable, 
It was her role in All My Children that truly defined her career. Sidney portrayed Julia Santos Kiefer from 1993 to 1996 and returned to the role from 1997 to 2002. Her enduring presence on the show came to an end in 2008 when the character of Julia met a tragic end. Barbara Stanwyck as Mary Carson. Barbara had already made a name for herself in the entertainment industry long before her appearance in The Thorn Birds. Her cinematic journey spanned across the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. However, as the 1950s progressed, her film career faced a decline, prompting her transition to television. As a multi-talented American actress, model, and dancer, Barbara showcased her skills in movies, television, and on stage. Throughout her illustrious career, her peers lauded her for being a versatile professional with a commanding and authentic presence on screen. Before transitioning to television, she had already amassed an impressive filmography, with 85 movies under her belt over 38 years. In 1983, Barbara's talent and dedication were recognized with her third Emmy Award, earned for her remarkable performance in The Thorn Birds. Just two years later, she made notable guest appearances in the soap opera Dynasty, and then took on a role in the short-lived spin-off series The Colbys. However, her stay on the show was brief, as she found herself dissatisfied with her role and departed after the first season. Richard Kiley as Patty Cleary. Before his iconic role in The Thorn Birds, Richard had already graced the television screen with success. Notably, he played a part in Patterns, a television play that aired in January 1955. This play garnered acclaim, earning an Emmy Award for its talented writer. Richard's talent wasn't confined to television alone. He achieved recognition on Broadway, winning a Tony Award for his performances in Redhead in 1959 and Man of La Mancha in 1966. His portrayal in Man of La Mancha held a special place in his heart as he cherished the opportunity to perform in this musical for over five years. He even made triumphant returns to Broadway with revivals of the show in 1972 and 1977. His television work was equally impressive, securing him three Emmy Awards and two Golden Globes. Notably, his role in The Thorn Birds earned him both of these prestigious accolades. After the miniseries concluded, he continued to shine on the small screen, winning a Golden Globe and Emmy for his performance in A Year in the Life. He clinched his third Emmy with a remarkable guest appearance in Picket Fences. Richard's distinctive baritone voice made him the ideal choice for narrating television documentaries. Notably, he lent his voice to the park's vehicle tour in Jurassic Park and narrated Mysteries of the Bible from 1994 to 1998. Tragically, in 1999, he played his final acting role in the movie Blue Moon, which was released just one month after his passing in March 1999 due to an unspecified bone marrow disease. Gene Simmons as Fiona. Gene gained recognition in the 1940s, becoming a beloved figure in Britain through her role in David Leon's adaptation of Great Expectations. This film made its mark by ranking third at the British box office in 1946. Transitioning to the 1970s, Jean shifted her career focus towards television and stage acting. Notably, she embarked on a U.S. tour with the production of A Little Night Music. However, it was her role as the Cleary family matriarch in The Thorn Birds that earned her an Emmy Award. Following the conclusion of this iconic series, Jean continued to showcase her talent in productions like North and South, The Dawning, and a remake of Great Expectations, where she shared the screen with Hugh Grant and Anthony Hopkins. Her later career even included a noteworthy appearance in Star Trek The Next Generation in 1991, where she portrayed a retired Starfleet Admiral, Brian Brown, as Luke O'Neill. 
the Australian actor has graced the screens in over 80 films and television projects since the late 1970s. His performances have spanned both his native Australia and international stages. Notable works following The Thorn Birds include roles in films like Cocktail, Gorillas in the Mist, Give My Regards to Broad Street, FX, FX2, Along Came Polly, Kill Me Three Times, Gods of Egypt, and many more. His portrayal in The Thorn Birds earned him well-deserved recognition, including Emmy and Golden Globe Award nominations. Even before this iconic series, he made a significant impact with his lead role in A Town Like Alice, which helped elevate his popularity, especially in the United States. Following the conclusion of The Thorn Birds, he temporarily returned to his homeland, Australia, before venturing back to the United States, where he landed the lead role in the action movie Hit FX. Over the next decade, he continued to travel between the U.S. and Australia, participating in various film projects. Additionally, he had the honor of appearing at the opening ceremony of the 2018 Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. Mayor Winningham as Justine O'Neill. Mayer embarked on her career initially as a singer and songwriter, making her mark by performing the Beatles' classic Here, There, and Everywhere in 1976 and 1977. Although her musical talents didn't lead to a recording contract, her captivating performances caught the eye of the acting world. Prior to her role in The Thorn Birds, Winningham accepted a couple of minor acting gigs. Following her memorable appearance in the series, Mayor Winningham continued her acting journey, landing a role in the hit movie St. Elmo's Fire. In this iconic film, she starred alongside the original Brat Pack members, gaining recognition and fame within this esteemed alumni group. Despite the success of St. Elmo's Fire, Mayer's path in Hollywood didn't lead to a plethora of other film roles. While she achieved the status of a teenage idol, her focus eventually shifted back to the realm of television. In the early 1990s, she made a return to the world of cinema, showcasing her talent in the family drama, The War. As the 2000s unfolded, Winningham ventured into television series, making appearances in shows like ER and Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Notably, in 2006, she assumed the role of Susan Gray on the ABC drama Gray's Anatomy. However, her character met an untimely demise in March 2007. Christopher Plummer as Archbishop Vittorio Contini Vercese. In The Thorn Birds, Archbishop Vittorio di Contini Vercese assumes the role of a sagacious, tolerant, and benevolent father figure to Ralph de Bricassar. While Archbishop Vittorio may be considered a relatively minor character, his primary purpose within the narrative is to provide counsel and support to Ralph. Christopher Plummer commenced his professional acting journey in 1948, making his debut with Ottawa's Stage Society. Subsequently, he honed his craft as an apprentice artist at the Montreal Repertory Theatre, sharing the stage with fellow apprentice actor William Shatner. In 1952, he took center stage in various productions at the Bermudiana Theater in Hamilton, Bermuda, where he garnered the attention of a U.S. producer, even though he initially hesitated to depart from the picturesque island. Adding to his illustrious career, Christopher Plummer authored his memoir, In Spite of Myself, which was published by Alfred A. Knopf in November 2008. Plummer was not only celebrated for his acting prowess, but also recognized as a patron of Theatre Museum Canada and a member of the Players Social Club in New York City. On February 5, 2021, Christopher Plummer passed away at the age of 91 in his residence in Weston. His death occurred approximately two and a half weeks after a fall that resulted in a head injury, as reported by Taylor. Brett Cullen as Bob Cleary. The second eldest son, aged 11 when the story begins, takes on a pivotal role within the narrative. Upon their arrival at Drogheda, he assumes the responsibilities of one of the managing stockmen, a position he holds throughout his entire lifetime. 
Cullen's acting career spans several decades and includes notable television and film roles. In the 1980s, he portrayed Dan Fix in the CBS drama Falcon Crest for two seasons from 1986 to 1988, and he took on the character of Sam Kane in the ABC Western series The Young Riders for one season during 1989 and 1990. Notably, in 1980, he assumed the role of the second Gideon Chisholm in the final nine episodes of the CBS Western miniseries The Chisholms, with Brian Kerwin playing the character in the preceding four episodes. His career continued to thrive in the 2010s. In 2013, Cullen secured a role in the television series Devious Maids. The following year, in 2014, he made recurring appearances in popular TV shows like Revenge, Criminal Minds, and Under the Dome. Additionally, during this time, he graced the big screen with his performance in the film The Last Rescue. One of his notable recent roles was in 2019, when Cullen portrayed Thomas Wayne in the film Joker, adding another layer to his diverse acting portfolio, John Friedrich as Frank Cleary, the eldest of the Cleary siblings, just shy of his 16th birthday as the story commences. He grapples with a fiery and capricious disposition that often leads to skirmishes and turmoil. He harbors a deep-seated aversion for his entire family, with the exception of Fee and Meggie, whom he fiercely shields from harm. Following his role in The Thornbirds, Friedrich chose to conclude his career in the film industry. One of his notable films, The Final Terror, was shot in 1981 but didn't hit theaters until 1983, well after Friedrich's retirement. The delay in its release was partially attributed to the rising fame of its female stars, Rachel Ward and Daryl Hannah. At the height of his acting career during the Thornbirds era, Friedrich made a pivotal decision to retire. He relocated to New Mexico, where he embraced married life, started a family, and embarked on a new journey as a financial consultant. Interestingly, Friedrich's films garnered a dedicated following, transforming him into something of a cult icon. Over time, rumors swirled around him, including a persistent myth that he had taken up a role as a live-in gardener for his Wanderers co-star, Ken Wall, who had achieved success with the television series Wise Guy. However, it's important to note that there has been occasional confusion between the film actor and an Australian criminal who shared the same name and once held a government position. This individual tragically took his own life in 1991. In some instances, Sources have erroneously conflated the actor and the criminal John Friedrich, mistakenly associating them as one and the same. In 2007, Friedrich made a surprise reappearance when he graced the stage at the University of Hawaii for a discussion about his filmography with Professor Mark Moody. During this remarkable event, Friedrich shared captivating anecdotes from his decade-long acting career and expressed a desire to potentially return to the world of acting, with the hope of concluding that particular chapter in his life. Stephen W. Burns as Jack Cleary At the outset of the novel, the youngest of the three sons is a mere ten years old. His bond with Bob is unbreakable, and he dedicates his entire life to toiling as a ranch hand at Drogheda, the sprawling homestead they call home. Upon completing high school, Burns embarked on his journey to New York City with aspirations of pursuing a career in theater. During the day, he took on various odd jobs to support himself, all the while diligently attending acting classes in the evenings. His unwavering dedication eventually bore fruit when he secured the lead role in the national touring production of the Broadway sensation, Grease. Subsequently, Burns made the pivotal decision to relocate to Hollywood. Remarkably, it took only six months in this vibrant entertainment hub for him to receive an offer that would set the stage for his career. This opportunity came in the form of the role of Lil Abner, in the 1978 television special, titled Lil Abner in Dogpatch Today. In the brief span of his career, Burns also graced the screen as Pete Stanchek in Walt Disney Productions' Herbie Goes Bananas. 
However, a tragic turn of events would forever alter the course of his life. In 1984, Burns was involved in a severe car accident that necessitated an emergency blood transfusion. Tragically, the blood he received during this critical moment was tainted, resulting in him contracting HIV. This devastating health challenge ultimately claimed his life on February 22, 1990, in Santa Barbara, California. Philip Anglum as Dane O'Neill. Maggie and Ralph's son, a beloved child who holds a special place in his mother's heart, was born after Maggie had parted ways with Luke. While most assumed Luke to be his biological father, the striking resemblance between the boy and Ralph was undeniable. Tragically, he met his untimely end through drowning during a family vacation in Greece. His journey into the world of entertainment commenced with his feature film debut in The All-American Boy, 1973, followed by his inaugural television appearance in the PBS production The Adams Chronicles, 1976. In 1979, still relatively unknown, Anglim made the bold choice to join the London play The Elephant Man. The play's success led to an off-Broadway debut at St. Peter's Church, and later a Broadway run at the Booth Theatre in 1979, garnering numerous accolades. His portrayal of Macbeth on Broadway in 1981, though later replaced by Kelsey Grammer, showcased his theatrical prowess. This success transitioned to television when he reprised the role of Macbeth in 1982. The same year, Onglim delivered a notable performance in the ABC television adaptation of The Elephant Man, earning him an Emmy nomination for Best Actor. Beyond his acting career, Anglim maintains a cattle farm in Tennessee, demonstrating his passion for farming and rural life. In 1992, he took a philanthropic initiative by founding the Lewis County Children's Fund a charitable organization dedicated to aiding children in the local area. As we conclude our journey through the lives of the Thorn Birds cast, it's evident that time has woven a tapestry of diverse experiences for these talented individuals. From the heights of fame to the serenity of retirement, each actor has embarked on their unique path. While some remained in the spotlight, others sought solace in different endeavors. Regardless of where life has taken them, the legacy of The Thorn Birds endures, reminding us of the captivating performances and the indelible mark they left on both the miniseries and the world of entertainment.